are two kinds of major laws. Three, but I will deal with two now for clarity. First of all, there's ritual laws. Write this down. Ritual laws. What are ritual laws? Ritual laws are secondary, temporary rituals, customs, systems, and programs required for corrective and redemptive purposes. Long sentence, but necessary. Each word important. What is ritual law? Say it with me. What is ritual law? Secondary law, temporary law, ritual law, custom law, systems and programs required for what? Corrective and redemptive purposes. That means ritual laws are necessary because something went wrong. They are not permanent. I'll give you an example. You go to the hospital and your lungs stop working. Now, do you know that your lungs work by a law that is automatic? You never try to breathe, do you? Think about it. You've been breathing for the last you know, couple of hours, and it was never a part of your consciousness. Because in your body, there's built in a natural system where your lungs rise and fall. Take in and release. Inspire, expire. It's a law. God built the law into your body. Now, you go to the hospital and your lungs stop working. We call it collapsed. What do they do? They hook you up to a machine. Am I right? And they call it a mechanical lung. And it goes... It does what your lungs stop doing. It is a ritual. <laughs> what is it? It's secondary. It's not your real lung. It's temporary. You ain't going to stay there all along. And it's, it's only a ritual. They hook you up. They got to actually do it. And it's custom for them to do it if you lose your, your, your capacity to breathe. It's also a system. It's also a program. They program it to keep it going until you get your lungs back. Now, when you get your lung capacity back, what happens? It's corrected. Once you correct it, then you are redeemed from the, the uh, electronic lung. So you are what? Free. But you ain't free from breathing. You're free to keep breathing. But this time, you kick back into the law that God put in your body. Glory, hallelujah. In other words, rituals are always temporary. What the church should not be dealing with and shouldn't be under is ritual law. That's what the Bible says we should stop doing. We don't need the artificial lung anymore. Jesus Christ hooked us back up but we still got to breathe. You ain't free from breathing. You're free from depending on rituals to breathe. So that's, that's the first kind of law I want you to understand. The second law, the second kind of law is called creation law principles. I wrote this down this way so you can get it clear. This is the most important law in life. Creation law principles. In other words, laws that are built in. Let me read it with you. What is creation law principle? What is it? It's original, inherent, natural principles and standards. Inherent in creation, necessary and required for effective function. That's creation law built in by the creator. These are the laws that you and I are supposed to obey in the kingdom of God. Having a high priest to take a lamb in the holy of holies was a ritual. It was not at creation. Burning incense was a ritual. 
It represented the presence of God. You don't need incense if God's present. Oh. I'm going to get in trouble right now, but I'm going to take a chance. You don't need oil anymore, even though we use it. Because the oil, it was a ritual representing the Holy Spirit that was gone from man. That's why the priests used oil. But when the Spirit came back, you don't need oil. Hmm? But you see, we are so confused. <laughs> we take the oil. And when you use, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> I can feel it. You religious people still here. When you put the oil on the person, you're telling the Holy Ghost, I ain't quite sure use enough. Wearing robes, for example. God was specific. He told the priest to wear linen. Don't let it touch your skin. He says, wear clothes that breathe. He says, don't allow it to be tight. Let it be loose. Why? Because it represents righteousness and holiness. It's beautiful. He said, put all kinds of beautiful things on it. Why? Now, we don't need that no more. He says, I've clothed you in righteousness through Jesus Christ. Oh, now watch this. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. So when you see a person in a robe, they are telling God, your work wasn't enough yet. different kind of law he said he set you free from the law that's the one he set you free from no more lambs and turtle doves and and taking incense and wearing all this funny clothes he said look you don't need that no more that's why when Christ came he never wore a uniform there's no command in Jesus name to wear a robe doesn't exist in the New Testament he never told us to build a building. He told most of the build a building. Why? Because the house he used to live in is messed up. Your body dumped him in the garden. Chapter 3. We got rid of the resident. So God said, look, since your house is all messed up, I'm going to build a house that I live in temporarily. I'll call it the tabernacle. Now, in 2,000 years, I'm going to work on it. And in 4,000 years, I'll get my house back. I'll cleanse it with my blood. And then Christ came and said, now receive the Holy Ghost. He's back in the house. You don't need to build no church with no funny stuff on it anymore. He's back home in the original house. But I can't teach this stuff. When we first built this building, do you know what the pastors told me? That's not a church. They said, how dare you call it the diplomat center? That's not a holy name, they said. Oh, I got letters, man. They said there's no steeple on that building. There's no cross in the building. What are you doing? There's no pews. This be the first ones to use chairs. Oh, they say, oh my God. Pews makes it holy. There's no choir stand. I mean, they're like, there's no altar. There's no, no communion table. They're like, hey, don't you get it? Now that's law that you're free from. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, keep it clean, it says. You know, some people will clean the building and don't clean their own lives. There are a lot of people in churches today who will sweep the floor, wipe the windows, and then go shack up with someone they're married to. They clean the house that they built, but not the one he built.
rituals. This is why men love rituals. They can hide behind it. So they come to this building and they kneel, you know. And they say, see, see God, see what I'm doing? See, look, see that? See my position, my posture? And God is saying, what about your heart? Are you bowed on the inside from the... Him to give you temporarily because of your sin. 